don't uh, miss any of this in case anybody wants to watch this later. There we go. Uh, while we're in here, since we are recording this, if you want to put yourself on camera and you're comfortable, please do so. Uh, if you can stay muted, uh, unless, you know, I say open your um, microphone so you can ask a question since we are recording. Some people show this in classrooms and things later, so we want to make sure that it's clean and uh, there's not a lot of chatter in the background. Um, if you have questions or comments to make, please do so in chat. I love that. It helps us um, base everything on actual what's happening to people and the questions they have. So that's great if you have questions or comments. As, as I said, we are recording this. Um, and we will talk a, a little bit about finances and credit reports and things. So be respectful of others' opinions about money just because we were all raised differently with money and you might um, have something else that you want to, uh, you might have some, have an opinion that other people might find, you know, interesting or not. So uh, just be respectful. First of all, I would like to see who everyone is. Uh, we have a, a short poll, if I can find it. There we go. Uh, can everybody see the poll there? No? Not yet. Okay, let me... Ah, here we go. I had to relaunch it. There you go. You guys can uh, answer the question there. Just so I know who I'm talking to, it does help me a little bit to frame what I'm saying when I know who's on the call. Great. Thank you, guys. So it looks like we have a little bit of everything here. So. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't look like we have a student yet, um, college or high school student, so that helps me a little bit. I'll keep my eye on uh, the waiting room just to make sure. But thank you guys for answering that. That is helpful. It helps me. Great. Look one more time. Had a few people come in at the last second, see if they answered it. Great. Okay, thank you. All righty. Get my stuff in here so y'all are we're ready to go. So identity theft is our topic today. I will talk a little bit about uh, fraud a little bit. Identity theft is kind of a, a smaller uh, portion of all the fraud, scams, identity theft. There are three different topics, but identity theft can bleed over into other things. So we'll talk a little bit about those two. The uh, identity theft, the definition is identity theft occurs when someone uses your personal identifying information. And I see we have college and high school staff on here. So you know what that uh, PID is and without they use it without your knowledge to commit fraud or other crimes, usually to get money is what it is, something to do with money. Uh, and that includes all of these things over here on the right, your birth date, name, social security number, accounts, passwords, PIN numbers, etc. Some data, uh, I got this data just a few days ago. They updated uh, the Consumer Sentinel Network does have data on identity theft and information about all types of fraud. I looked up national and Oklahoma uh, data, so I'll be sharing a little bit of that with you. Uh, there were, it goes up, I've, I've looked at the last three years and it's gone from three something million to 5.2 uh, in the last three years. So it's gone up. There were uh, certain kinds of fraud that went up 557% during COVID. Uh, I, I, you know, I am a researcher and I like to know why is this happening? And my idea was that 
people were working from home and everybody was on their computer, buying on their computer, working from their computer, and they weren't as careful as they should be because they weren't used to that. They didn't know how to, you know, how to navigate and be safe on their computer. So that's my, because that is a huge amount to, for, um, um, 557% uh, in two years, because it usually doesn't go up that much. This year, it went up about 1 million, 1.2 million from last year. Uh, there were um, reports, 5.2 million, the top three were identity theft, imposter scams, and then other things having to do with credit bureaus, et cetera, uh, where people were trying to get information from about other people on purpose. Um, the Oklahoma data, this, these four screenshots are from Oklahoma specifically. Uh, there were 1,244 identity thefts reports in Oklahoma in 2022. There were likely many, many more. The data shows that many, many people do not report it. And I, I know specifically every time I do this uh, presentation, people say that they know somebody or they were uh, victims of identity theft and it wasn't reported. So I'm sure these numbers are much larger than are on this, but these are the ones that were reported to the federal security agency. So that's the data that they get for this. So identity theft and imposter scams, and like we said, that credit bureaus things were the top three. We'll talk a bit about imposter scams just because they're so popular now. And I know two people personally uh, who were victims or know about people who were victims of imposter scams. Um, theft types, because uh, we'll talk a little bit about people just stealing your information um, and credit card thought fraud, as you would probably logically think was the biggest one. So that's just some information. And this is kind of to give you an idea of the um, how big of an issue this is. Uh, one of the interesting things is when you ask people, they often think that older people are the most often um, part or taken advantage of, but that's not the truth. Uh, usually it's the majority of victims are age 20 to 29. So a lot of the students and clients that you guys work with. Uh, older people are victims and normally when they are, they lose more money, you know, they, because they have more. And I'll tell you about one of those here in a little bit. It was just appalling to me. So I'll tell you a little bit that I, uh, about it later uh, that I heard in a Jumpstart meeting. Um, imposter scams, what I'm gonna tell you about later, um, of those one in five people who were part of an imposter scam lost money and the amount lost was huge 2.6 billion dollars this last year in 2022 identity thefts reports were up 13 percent and uh, and I'm, i want to look this one up government benefits applied for and received that was a huge uh, upswing in reports during COVID, one of the biggest because of the stipe, the uh, money that people were getting, the checks they were getting, there was a huge increase in people trying to take advantage of people receiving, re receiving their stipends, etc., uh, which makes sense. So that's down 88%. And I'm not sure, I believe I was looking at a research study yesterday that that's due to some new laws that were enacted. So that's a good thing. The cost of ID theft. This is one of the things that I know firsthand. My uh, twin sister and her husband uh, were victims of a social security uh, infringement. Somebody applied and received their tax refund two years. They got it one year and then it, they reported it. They spent two years trying to fix it. And the third year, the same person got their tax refund again before they could get it fixed. Um, and I haven't asked them, but they spent hours and hours trying to get it fixed. The average person who has their ID uh, stolen spends 300 hours or 40 hours a week 
for 7.5 weeks trying to fix it. So when it happens, it's, it is not fun. And one of the best things that you can do is to keep your uh, everything secure. And we're going to get, talk a lot about that, uh, especially for young people knowing how to do that and why they need to be careful. I heard a story last night. I did this same presentation with a group of young women and heard stories that, you know, they really needed to hear that information. Everybody does, especially young people. And you can just sit and think for a minute how long imagine sitting and working for seven and a half weeks for for 40 hours trying to fix things and i'm gonna i'm gonna ask my twin how long it took her to fix that problem because i know that and they still have to file a special paper every time they do their refund now because of that it's not as simple as it used to be for them so let's get into the types of id uh, theft stealing is the most obvious one had a young lady last night talking about her purse being stolen during a party when only friends were invited. And that's just heartbreaking for young people. And it's better for them to know ahead of time. You can share with them, you know, yes, you trust your friends. Yes, you love your friends, but maybe they invite somebody you don't know or, you know, you, you're not paying attention and to keep everything safe because stealing is the most obvious and easiest way for somebody to steal your ID wallets, purses. We all hear about people getting their mail stolen. I live in a rural area and I actually have people who have cameras aimed at their rural mailbox because theft of their mail is so common. Um, they can get your insurance information, tax information, and they can also reroute your mail to a different address. I haven't heard personally about that from somebody, but it would fairly, be fairly easy to do. They'll look through trash. Uh, I told somebody the other day that the casino employees told me that they have to watch for that constantly, that they have people going through their trash trying to find information to steal IDs. And that's part of their security is to watch for people going through their trash. It didn't even dawn on me. And so if they have to be on the lookout for it, you know people are doing it. I've heard that they do it at, um, uh, or what it where where you take your trash and dump it at, at big sites centers where you can take your trash and dump it that they have to have people watching that's that's all they're doing is looking for bills looking for those credit card things where they're inviting you uh to um you know get a credit card those kinds of things that's what they're looking for let's move on skimming uh this is when they use a special device to read your credit or debit card, either uh, at an ATM, but they can also do it at gas stations. I don't know if y'all saw this a couple of weeks ago, there was a story on our local news here in Oklahoma, where a man had seen a little piece of black plastic beside the card reader at a gas station on the pump. And he said it, he'd been there every day and he went like that and it moved. And sure enough, it was a, a device that was there to steal card numbers. And so you just have to be really careful. Phishing, we hear a lot about this at our work as a state agency. We're very careful about email, uh, pop-up messages, text messages. I'm sure all of you have seen those on your own personal phone. I get them very often. And I even have a special program with my phone company to prevent it. And I still get them. Um, and there, a lot of your information it's not as dangerous. They're getting it from apps you've installed, um, your email that you uh, ordered something from, and they sell, if they don't specifically say they're not going to sell it, they'll sell your phone number or your email to someone else. And so sometimes it's, they're not illegal, they're marketing, but it can lead to other things. So you just have to be very careful about sharing your email, who you're giving it to, etc. And they use this information to gain access to your per your personally identifiable information uh, for scamming. Shoulder surfing sounds just like it is. They're looking over your shoulder. You've heard about, you know, look and see if anyone's behind you at the ATM, um, at the computer or another electronic advice. I've never heard of this personally. Um, 
but I'm sure it's an e one of the easiest ways for them to find information. I've seen movies about it, you know, where <laughs> you see how they did it and they're acting like they're having a friendly conversation and they're watching what you're doing, but I haven't heard of that personally myself. Pretexting, uh, that's when a scammer has some of your personal information and they use it to bait you into releasing more information. They might say they're from your bank, your insurance company, the IRS, etc. In general, and I, it's not a hard fast rule, but in general, most places will not call you to get information. If they do, it's probably like from our lo my local um, credit unit, union. It's a small agency. I know the people who work there. They will sometimes call and tell me things that they probably wouldn't other people because they know me. But in general, the IRS is not going to call you and ask for your information. The electric company isn't going to call you and ask for your credit card number or your bank account information. They're going to mail you. And even if they do, be leery. Say, I'm going to call you back and give you that information. I'm not gonna give it to you right here. That's a good way to just be safe. Find out their number, call them back to make sure that you're not giving it to somebody that you're not supposed to. Social engineering, uh, using false pretenses, uh, either in person or over the phone to get your personal information from your financial institution, etc. cetera. Uh, and this is, I'm gonna tell this story that I learned at Jumpstart from the uh, police, the the uh, retired policeman who worked there and worked um, to make sure that none of their um, clients are getting scammed or that their IDs are being stolen. Uh, an, an older woman uh, followed to Toby Keith on Facebook, and she um, he had said he had cancer and was getting it treated. And she commented, "If you ever need any help or money, let me know." And somebody saw that. They got her phone number. She had it on Facebook. They called her, said they were Toby Keith. After a couple of calls, asked her for money and she was giving him large amounts of money. And when the bank found out about it, they tried to talk to her and ask her not to do it. And they finally had to get her family involved because uh, she wouldn't believe them. She really believed Toby Keith was, and they had gotten all the information from Facebook and then called her and got, the, got her to give them their other information. So social engineering. How do you protect yourself? That's the important part. And this is a good part for students and uh, people who work with students, either college or high school, uh, to really hit home with students because a lot of times they're not aware of this information. Be organized. The young group of ladies that I talked to uh, last evening are in the process of organizing their lives and getting back on track. And for me, this is a it's first because to me, it's the most important thing for especially for young people is to get their life organized as far as their paper, their bills, their account numbers, their credit card information, all of those things. File it, have it in a file digitally paper. It's better to have it in two places put it somewhere safe, but have it all where you can get your hands on it. Have your social security card somewhere, usually in a lockbox. We'll talk about a lockbox is, is uh, important, but having that information right at your fingertips where you can get to it and it's secure and safe. Um, a lot of young people, I know 30 and 40 year olds who still don't have files. They still have to go get their social security card from the social security agency every time they need it because they lose it. They don't put it in a file. They can't put their hands on birth certificates, all those kinds of things. And to me, that's just part of becoming um, you know, a mature person is to have those things taken care of. And sharing that with young people is super important. And they don't often know that. Sometimes their parents didn't do that. So showing them how to do it, this is what it looks like. This is what you should do. This is how you can save it digitally. Uh, those kinds of things so that they have that it's harder for people to take advantage of you when you know what's going on. And the only way to do that is to be organized. So you want to file it, um, recycle things that don't have to be shredded, shred things or take them to a shredding place when it's things that a scammer could use. 
and take care of it. Set routines and schedules. If you have your bills, don't your mail, don't leave it in your mailbox for three or four days. Take care of it every single day. Um, place your mail on hold if you're on vacation, those kinds of things. It's, you know, for a lot of us, that's common knowledge, but for young people, it may not be. So it's a good thing to share with them. Keep your personal documents safe. I have personal experience with this. Uh, our home was robbed. Uh, my husband did have a lockbox. All of our um, important papers were locked in a security box and they took the security box uh, and opened it. Uh, we found out later it had some extra keys to all of our cars, <laughs> so security numbers, passports, everything. So we tell people to put it in a lockbox. My husband now has that lockbox uh, bolted to something that's very difficult to move. If somebody was there long enough and they had the intent, they could probably get it. Uh, but a bank uh, lockbox is a good place, um, certainly more safe than a home. But if you are at home, a lockbox that's secured, they have some that are built into walls now. Uh, and easy to, I actually looked at those and they look very easy to, uh, to install, uh, but keeping things safe, keep your personal documents safe. One of the things I told the young people last night was do not carry your social security card in your wallet or purse. Some people do it, it's a regular thing for them and it's a big mistake. Almost all security people will tell you don't put it somewhere in, on your person. It's too important and it's, uh, you wanna give, an ID thief, a, a reason to celebrate, it's to get your social security number. Um, a young lady at, last night again said when at that party when somebody stole her purse, she had her social security card in it. And her mother had told her, don't put your social security card in your purse. And she said, I'm applying to jobs, I have to have it. And she put it in her purse, got stolen. So, you know, you don't need it very often. Usually when you need, when you're getting a new job, you need it, but usually you don't need it. So it's not important to carry it on your person. It should stay someplace safe. Does anybody have any questions so far? No? Great. Look at my time. Uh, you want to destroy any unnecessary documents that you don't need, old tax files. Uh, they say you should keep files for a certain period of time. They used to say three years. Some people say five years, but when you aren't going to use them anymore, they need to be destroyed. Uh, some places will have uh, open shred times for people, but having your own shredder is the best way to do that, uh, especially if you get lots of credit card uh, requests, uh, destroying those, your bank statements, the old bank statements that have your bank uh, account numbers on them, things like that. Uh, you wanna make sure they're destroyed things with that personally identifiable information that we had on it, things with your name, your address, your um, phone number, account, any account information, et cetera, uh, are good things to make sure that they're not free for people to pick out of your trash. We talked about protecting your social security number, the physical way of doing that. The other way to protect it is to not give it out unless you must. There are lots of times that uh, different companies, groups will ask you for your social security number and you think it's because they must have it. And oftentimes they don't have to have it. And you can ask them, must you have this to complete this transaction or to get this or that? And if they don't have to, if they can use something else, give them something else uh, because they are susceptible to getting their information stolen too. I just got a mail from AT&T from three years ago uh, where they told me that they had had a security breach and that my information had gotten out and they just found out about it. And they were just now telling me three years later. Um, so, you know, protect your social security number. Don't give it out to people on the phone when you don't know who they are and you're not sure. Again, say, I would like to call you back and uh, think about this, give you my information and call them back and make sure it's not a scammer. Do they really need it? Do a little research. Do they really need your social security number? Keep it protected. It's like the holy grail of ID th thieves is to have your social security number. So you wanna keep that safe at all costs. 
social media. Uh, I know a lot of, of uh, people think about this as far as personal security, uh, how you keep your uh, self safe uh, using social media, you know, personal for your personal safety, but there's also ID safety. Uh, there's uh, the lady I just told you about a bit ago at Jumpstart, the older lady that was done on Facebook from social media. They found those ID thieves use everything. They had everything they needed on her social media. And we'll look at that now because she gave it all to them. So as you look at this screen, many of us have this screen. We put some of these, we put where we worked, we put where, you know, in general, where we live, our history, we say where we graduated, we might tell them a little bit about, about ourselves and some basic information. Uh, all of you take a look at that and tell me if you, in chat, if you see anything that looks, you know, like, oh man, I certainly wouldn't put that on there. And why, why do you think? Or you can, you can come on uh, uh, your microphone too, if you see anything. Because when I first looked at this, I was thinking, well, I see some things that are certainly problems, but you know, it doesn't all look bad. I have some of this stuff. Um, so does anybody see anything on there that they definitely would not do? And you can add that in chat if you want to. I see somebody personally uh, messaged me here and said phone number. And that's usually um, one of the things that most people don't put on there is their phone number on their uh, uh, Facebook. Uh, in the past, it was automatically on there and you had to opt out, but I think that's been changed. I need to look that up, but I think that's been changed. You have to opt in now to have it on. Used to, you had to opt out, but I think now you do. Uh, somebody put a pet's name and let's look a, a little bit about this and talk about why some of it's okay and some of it maybe is not okay. Uh, putting your birth date uh, is probably not a good idea. A lot of uh, security measures that companies have, banks, etc. ask for your birth date, um, medical especially. They ask, they use that as the first question, what's your birth date uh, for insurance purposes. Uh, uh, one of the ladies last night said somebody had used her medical insurance and uh, charged, had bills from things that she hadn't been to the doctor for, uh, which I can't imagine. I'd never heard of that before. But I remember yesterday I had a doctor's appointment. The first thing they asked me for was my birth date. And I'd never thought of that before. Uh, when you think about um, security questions for setting new passwords, changing your password, one of the first things they, they'll they ask you is what high school did you graduate from or what was your school mascot? Um, and we know, you know, how easy would that be to find if you said your high school mascot was a pirate in Oklahoma? You know, you look and see what schools are there, you know, which schools have, she graduated from this high school. I know one of her, you know, password change security questions because I know what her mascot was. So you can see how ID thieves could use this information uh, to change your password. Phone, of course, um, there's lots, there's so many reasons. It's hard to explain all the reasons why you wouldn't want to put your phone number on here, mainly because <laughs> you don't want phone calls all the time uh, from people that you don't know, but also because they can use this information to call and fish, to get more information from you, to pretend to be somebody that you know. And you know now, uh, we've seen this at our work too. Uh, people can email you and call you and uh, use somebody, it looks like somebody you know. It will have their name on there, but it wasn't, it's not their phone number. It's probably a scammer of some kind. It may just be a marketer, it may just trying to be selling you something. But this is how they can get that information, is just from Facebook. So let's look at some other ones here. Uh, saying your family members, because sometimes they'll ask you a security question, what's your brother's name? Uh, or they'll use that information to pretend they know you or they know a family member and use it as a way to get more personal information from you. And saying where you're from, of course. Uh, there's lots of ways they can use that information and where you graduated from. 
So just, it doesn't mean that you can't put any of this on Facebook. Just think about when you're doing your security questions and things that you have out there that you want to keep secure. Have you used any of this information? If so, you may not want to put it on here. Uh, pet name, we put that, somebody said that in here, uh, using a pet's name, that's often a security question. I've had that one, a, a pet name. Um, what's your favorite pet? And I've used, you know, I haven't put it, in it, put it in my Facebook, but I can see where people would do that thinking it's innocuous and surely this can't be a problem. Uh, Janet asked, there are websites you could go to and search for people and it will give siblings addresses, phones, etc. And Janet, in my, I have not done a lot of research on that, but in my, when I've seen those sites, a lot of times they're almost like a scam them themselves. So I'm sure they've gotten that information without obviously your knowledge and they're at usually by the end they're asking you to pay for something they're making money off of it i'll have to do some more research on that janet uh, about how you could keep it off these sites because i have not heard how you could do that you there are ways to try to keep it from getting anywhere else uh, by not putting it on sites like this by keeping your information safe you can ensure that other people don't get it that other groups don't get it but if they've already gotten it, uh, I'm not sure that there's a lot you can do about it. There might be, uh, and I know a lot about mail and preventing people from sending you spam mail. Uh, I'm not sure about that on the website. I'll have to do some research on that. That's a really good question. Because when I see those, you always think, oh, my friend so-and-so, they're living in here now. Uh, I sure wish I could get their address or their phone number so I could contact them and they want you to pay for it. And that's generally what that it leads to something else. And I would be I wouldn't I wouldn't put anything in those because they didn't get your permission to do it first place. So there's no telling how they're using it. But I'll, I'll have to do some information on uh, do some more searching on that one. Use strong passwords. We all know that we've heard it forever. Don't use the same password everywhere. Uh, don't just change the end number. There's so many things that you can do to keep your password safe. Usually the best thing is to have the, uh, create one that's very difficult to guess or to have it generated by the computer. And you're saying, oh, I can never remember that. A good way to, to keep passwords unique and to save them is to have a service do it for you. Some of them are free. There's some that are paid, but there are services that, and Google is one of them, uh, that will keep it a, safe across all devices so you don't have to memorize them. And in my opinion, I'd rather change it every time and keep it safe <laughs> than have the same one on everything. It's just too dangerous to have the same one. I personally, I've had five times at least that I've been notified that there was a security breach with my information and I needed to change all my, at least five, maybe more. Uh, so for me, I would rather change it all the time if I don't wanna have a really unique one, but I would prefer to have the computer do it for me. Uh, there are ways that you can make them unique yourself, uh, use a, a phrase, incorporate numbers and special letters, like this one shows here, where you use the uh, first letters of a little phrase that you've memorized, and then to make it even normally, they'll ask you to use a number or a um, character, and you can change, you know, like a one for an I or things like an, an at sign for um, an A, things like that to make them even more unique. But if, of all of the things that you can do, just because I know, I know for a fact that there are security breaches where your password has gotten taken, somebody knows what it is, it's better to go through the pain of having unique ones and changing them often than having the opposite happen, happen and have your ID stolen. Go paperless. This is a, an excellent way. Normally banks, credit card companies, et cetera, will have more secure measures than you will. And you say, well, I hear about security breaches all the time. Yes, you do, but they're more secure than your computer is. I can almost guarantee you that. 
uh, and they have specialists there uh, on site making sure things are safe. And if people are trying to get their information, they're really trying hard. Um, and you get notified, usually pretty quickly. I, mean, I got mine three years later, but normally I'm, I'm alerted pretty quickly. If you, your ID got stolen from something you did, no one would notify you. Usually you find out the hard way that your ID's already been stolen. So, you know, going paperless, letting the company handle it is a good way to do that. Um, and letting students and clients know that, hey, do you know that you can pay all of your bills online? There's apps for that too, that will help you do all of that. Um, if you get a lot of junk mail that could be used uh, by spammers or uh, thieves, uh, you can go to Stop Junk Mail. This is an opt-out, prescreen.com. I've used this for my uncle and myself, and it does help tremendously. Uh, there are other services out there that you can use, uh, political junk mail and some other mails like that where they're constantly asking you for money. Uh, you can't opt out of those. Uh, sometimes you accidentally say you're interested in something and then you just start getting tons of mail uh, at the bottom of every one of those is a the place where it came from and it's usually three distributing companies that do all of them and you can write you have to write to them you can't email them but look at the distributing company write to them and say please do not send any more mail to this person at this address and legally they have to stop uh, but you can't opt out of those there's some things you can't opt out of but credit card things uh, credit, you know, offering credit cards, um, coupons, uh, a lot of um, shopping things you can opt out of. And you can pick which ones you want to opt out of. Some of them you may want to receive. Uh, that's a good place to go if you get lots of junk mail because they can't, a lot of scammers will get your mail just to get the little bit of information they can from that type, type, type of junk mail. Monitoring your accounts is one of the most important things you can do. Like I said, some companies will do that for you. Some of them uh, will let you know uh, when things have happened, but doing it yourself is also very important. Um, one of the easiest ways to do that is to get on annualcreditreport.com. I, I let all young people know that I talk to, uh, especially high school seniors who are just turning 18. Uh, who can do this for themselves once they turn 18 is to check your credit report. Um, in addition to, you know, monitoring things like your monthly bills and your statements, uh, getting your credit report on a uh, regular basis really helps you spot things that are happening. Um, your every consumer is entitled to one free credit report report per year per credit a reporting agency. Uh, and those are on the screen here, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. And um, if you have employees or student clients or clients of some kind, you can encourage them to check it at least once a year, but you could do it three times and spread it out throughout the year, especially if they had something concerning or unusual happening. Uh, I would wanna spread it out. Um, annualcreditreport.com is the only site that Oklahoma Money Matters uh, recommends because other sites like freecreditreport.com, which sounds a lot like annualcreditreport.com, uh, will give you a free report, but only if you sign up for a credit monitoring service, you have to pay them something. Uh, so, you know, we don't encourage you to do that. Um, some people think if you check your credit report, every time you do it, it negatively impacts your credit score. And, um, that's not true. If you check your own, it's considered a soft inquiry um, and won't have any impact on your credit score at all. Uh, if you do apply for a credit for credit, like a credit new credit card and allow a creditor to check your report, that's considered a hard inquiry and that can slightly lower your credit score according to how many of those you have. Uh, you can also monitor your credit on a more regular basis. Some credit cards uh, and banks provide free monitoring like my bank. Did. I was on vacation two years ago. I saw that Bank First was calling me, which I thought was odd. So I answered it and it was Bank First. And they said that asked if I had just been in this town that I'd just been in 15 minutes ago and they had used a card reader 
they already had my information and had uh, purchased something. And for some reason, the bank uh, thought it was a problem and they contacted me immediately and stopped it. But it took, it, it was no more than 15 minutes. They, they got my, my information and used my card. And some banks do provide that for their customers and credit card companies do. And apps like Credit Karma will um, allow you to self-monitor your credit report for free. Your credit for free, you can check on Credit Karma. Just know that Credit Karma is also, um, you know, they're a company. They're making money also. So, you know, just be aware of that. It is a good place to go and it's, you know, it's okay. You just want to be, go in with your eyes wide open. So when you go in to check your credit report, if you've never done this, this is an excellent thing to do with young people or for young people who have done this for the first time, to pay attention as they go through this to see, you know, what's going on, what are they going to have to report. Some people are very leery of doing a credit report because they're afraid they're going to have to give personal information, etc. It's already all in here and sometimes that freaks people out uh, when they see how much information is already in here and it's, it's because you've have credit, you've um, gotten a credit card, you've gotten a loan, you've paid rent to somebody, you had a contract to pay rent. As soon as you have credit, your information is gonna be in here. All of this is. Um, on freecreditreport.com, you, do, you don't have to have a credit card to get this information. And again, uh, these are the three companies that did it and you can pick which one you want to get your credit report from. Once you get in here, this is the kind of information you're going to see. And this is good to show people to that you're working with uh, what they're going to find. Uh, sometimes it's a uh, last night, the young ladies that I were I was talking to, they were shocked at uh, what they saw and what was on here because they had no that I didn't have a single of the 15 that were in there that had seen their credit report before. So this was a good lesson for them to know this is what is known and this is what's happening when you ask for a credit new credit uh, card or for a loan or you go in to get a, a nice apartment this is what people are going to be seeing and uh what's happening so um they'll uh, see their past employers uh this is an interesting one that shocks people is how long you've had credit the first time that that uh, uh it was registered that you had some sort of credit that you were paying somebody or you had a contract with somebody uh, to pay for something uh, how long ago that was mine's going to be really old <laughs> because i'm old <laughs> uh, it will show uh, the number of accounts you have including bank accounts etc any collections or liens or bankruptcies that you've had oh sorry and uh, as you look at this information, you're looking for things that don't look right. Uh, is that my current address? Are there any previous addresses that you never really lived at? That's a red flag. Uh, somebody may have, you know, changed your mail to a different address and started receiving your mail somewhere else. Uh, if it says you worked somewhere you didn't work before or has, a large number of accounts that you know because you can click on these and see the specific accounts is there a bank account that you had no idea was there or a credit card that you had no i you know i didn't never open a credit card there that's a big warning sign that you might need uh to do more investigation so if you find out you look on your credit report you hear from an agency uh, you're like my brother-in-law, you uh, ask about your tax return and are told that somebody that you've already filed for your tax return and received it, what do you do then? Uh, and I had several people ask that last night, the girl who had her social security card stolen, um, a lady who said that uh, she had had her tax, the same thing, her tax return, uh, she never got her money, somebody else got it. Uh, it was somebody she knew, but it was still not her. Uh, so what do you do then? And they both ask that, and I'm sure my brother-in-law had to do this too. You're going to, uh, first thing is check your credit report, look and see, um, has anything happened because of this breach, you know, that has happened? 
uh, check all your accounts. Is there an account there that they don't know about? I, you know, is this an account that I know about? Did I open a bank account at this bank? Close any accounts that you did you know are not yours or have been tampered with that you see somebody has taken money out or whatever on any account. Close those. File a police report and report it to the Federal Trade Commission. That's that slide I talked about at the very beginning, the 1,257 um, identity theft um, cases in Oklahoma in 2022. Uh, that's if they reported it to the Federal Trade Commission. I'm sure there's many, many more that were not reported. Uh, but that's what you should do because they can, they may have information about other things that the this group is doing that you don't know about that they could have been using your information for so that's a good place to uh, uh, you want to do that to make sure that you're covered completely you want to freeze your credit uh, that's what they um, it's not just closing your bank account or calling the credit card company and saying you know uh, close this card you want to freeze your credit and uh, you can go to Equifax, Experian, or TransUnion, and uh, you can see the uh, um, addresses here. This one says on Experian says freeze, and TransUnion says credit freeze. Uh, and they can notify anybody that you have accounts with or any credit cards that no more transactions uh, with anything. So that uh, if they're if the thieves are trying to identity thieves are trying to do other things besides just use your credit card, they can't. Um, so this, this is a way that they can do it all at once. So that's a lot of information. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Janet, no, they would not ask for your social security number. Um, and I wouldn't call. You can do that online. You want to use that um, opt out. If you Google it, uh, do opt out and you'll see it's a, a thing you do online and it will tell you uh, you'll do it online. You don't call anybody. That sounds like another scam to me. Um, and this one, if I remember correctly, because I've used it before, actually opt out uh, prescreen.com. Uh, they act the there's a government, I, I think it's not IRS, I forget what it is, but there's a government website that will take you here. It will take you to this. So it's, it's fairly secure. Uh, and they're not going to ask for your social security number, they'll ask for uh, maybe an address, but and it will ask you what do you want to stop. Uh, but no, they shouldn't ask for your that's not normal to ask for your social security number. Are there any other chats here that I missed? Let me take a look. Yeah. Um, so that is all I have today. Was there uh, anything else that, uh, any questions that anyone had or anything that I can answer before we uh, leave here today? Want to remind everybody on um, Tuesday, May 6th, 16th, we'll have a um, another webinar at noon on student loan borrowing basics. If you're thinking about getting a student loan or you're going to a student or talking to students or you want to have, have your students come and listen, um, Sarah Lorenzen, my partner, will do that. Um, Laura Lee asks, once the credit is frozen, what happens then, payments, etc.? You'll have, uh, they'll have information on, um, when you go to annualcreditreport.com, there's a, a little note at the bottom, I think it's like the, the page on your credit report, if you see something that's wrong, and you have to freeze your credit, it goes through step by step things that you'll do, and it will tell you what to do next. So it will differ according to what's happening, what's going on, there's no an single answer for that for everything. But then they'll tell you this is what you need to do next. More than likely, according to what's been stolen, 
you know, can I open another account? Can I change the account numbers? Can I get it? If they have your social security card and it's not secure yet, the police or federal trade commission, one of the, um, uh, the groups that you're working with may advise you on what to do next. I wouldn't go start opening new credit cards or anything until you found out though, I would ask experts, uh, from the group that you're, you contact to freeze your accounts. They'll have a step-by-step -step thing at the end. Um, oh, wow. Kelly said that annualcreditreport.com is currently offering free weekly online credit reports. That's interesting. I wonder if there's a big breach somewhere. Has anyone heard? Kelly, have you heard? I thought maybe there was a big security breach from a big company or something, because I, I know occasionally they'll do that. I think they've been doing that since COVID. Oh, okay. Huh. Do it then, but they're still allowing them. So. Yeah. Well, like I said, uh, the reports of ID th that uh, thefts went up 557 percent during COVID. So that's probably why, so that people can check really frequently. And a lot of the 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 theft was from people in the United States, but also other countries. There were a lot of other countries, Africa, Russia, China. There were a lot of other companies that were preying on uh, people in the United States. So I'm sure that's part of it. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. I appreciate uh, you being here and I hope you show up at our next uh, webinar on um, student loan basics. If you don't have any more questions, we'll end a little early today. And I appreciate uh, 